be devoured by dogs. Here are Washington Post, New York Times, New York Daily News, Los Angeles Times, New York Post. All these American newspapers reported that the massive rape of Bangladesh had been a crime without precedent in modern history. A stream of victims and eyewitnesses tell how truckloads of Pakistani soldiers and their collaborators took town on village after village at night, rounding up women by force. Most of them were raped on the spot, otherwise known as hit and run rape. Some were even carried off to the military compound to the cantonment. Khadija, a 13-year-old girl, could have very well been my daughter. With four of her friends, she was walking to school when a gang of Pakistani soldiers kidnapped them. They were put into a military camp in Mohammedpur with 40 other girls, and they were kept prisoner there for six months till the end of the war. They were kept naked so that they could not escape, and they were watched so that they couldn't commit suicide. At the end of six months, when Khadija was rescued, she was pregnant. She was asked, where do you want to go to? She cried and said, I want to go to my mother. Bright, young Bangladeshi girls blossoming into womanhood, dreaming of the future. A future crushed underfoot in nine months. forward, tell the world, and ask the international community, appeal to their conscience, can we really punish the criminals? Yes, of course. It's about time that even for Bangladesh, the genocide has taken place, there should be some war crime tribunals as they're being held for Bosnia and Serbia. All the people in the world that should gather us in around an international functional law. The trials in Nuremberg set a definition for genocide and crimes against humanity. Can the 1971 atrocities in Bangladesh fall under this definition? Crimes against humanity, by their magnitude, reach beyond the individual. Typical is, for example, the crime of genocide, where whole peoples are killed or exterminated or transferred because of their origin or their ethnic background or their religion or their race and not because of anything the individual has done or represents. What happened in uh, East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh, was a genocide and can be compared with other genocides in our time. The, the dominant culture of West Pakistan, which, was the, which, which ruled East Pakistan, was the Punjabi culture. And they came to kill Bengalis. And yes, it was a slaughter, and yes, it was state policy to do it. And uh, there was no rationale for it. People who were killed had committed no crimes. 
except to be Bengali and to wish to have more freedom. And uh, even then, they didn't. It wasn't always people who were politically active. Just anybody who, who might be, suspect. And they went all over the country doing this, killing. Uh, no one really knows how many, but at least a million and maybe a good deal more. On October 1st, 1946, after 315 days of trial, the sentences were pronounced. Herman Wilhelm Goering, on the counts of the indictment on which you have been convicted, tribunal sentences you to death by hanging. So there is no question that anyone who participated in genocide in Bangladesh should be brought to trial, as people have been brought to trial with regard to uh, the atrocities in World War II. That there is no exception uh, from that in my mind, that those who uh, were uh, responsible for what happened in Bangladesh in 1971 still should be brought to trial under an international court uh, with uh, an international establishment of international law. Unfortunately, we have not yet gotten our act together, so we truly have in the international justice. But I think the first small steps have been taken in the last two episodes of genocide, and I think they should be, um, justice should be brought to bear on what happened in Bangladesh. It should not be forgotten uh, simply because many people on this side of the world don't know about Bangladesh. Mr. Uthant, the General Secretary of the United Nations, spoke of the Bangladesh genocide as the saddest episode in human knowledge, the darkest chapter in the annals of mankind. I plead to the conscience of the people of the world to come forward to help those Bangladeshis now who are fighting to bring this people responsible for this genocide for trial. And I'm really delighted that the international community more and more is saying we cannot allow those responsible for these horrible atrocities to go unpunished. We have to hold them responsible. And I think of the situation with, uh, with General Pinochet, who committed similar atrocities in, in uh, Chile. And I think of the situation currently in, in Kosovo with Milosevic and, and the kinds of things that he's done. Um, so there are a lot of parallels, and I think it's very, very important that people who are responsible for these kinds of crimes against humanity are held before the court. Madam Isabella Bloom, the head of the World Peace Commission, the shocking sight of these mass graves has horrified and saddened me. This genocide was even more terrible than the Nazi gas chambers. These criminals should be punished. This is our demand on behalf of all the family members of martyrs of Great Liberation War of 1971. The victims are not known to the perpetrators. They are simply carrying out a broader policy of some political goal, which their leaders are directing them to do. And uh, so this is a new category of crime, which unfortunately exists in our time and has got to be erased. Uh, the very same thing that had has happened in Rwanda, uh, in the Balkans, uh, and elsewhere around the world, where we have set up international tribunals yet happened in Pakistan. It was just that the, the world community didn't rally behind the Bengali issue for any number of what they call geopolitical reasons. Imposes a grave responsibility. The wrongs which we seek to condemn and punish have been so calculated, so malignant and so devastating that civilization cannot tolerate their being ignored. U.S. Senator Edward Kennedy said, it is difficult for me to believe 
that any human being could even think of so much barbaric cruelty. Nobody ever put any one of them behind bars for killing almost three million people. How long do we have to wait until justice is done? How far do we have to travel before we can catch the criminal? As I listen to some of the Jewish Holocaust survivors, and I hear them now as old men and women telling their story, knowing that the suffering they went through and the suffering their family went through will not be forgotten. It has helped me know how important it is that we speak out, that it go to crimes against humanity, go to the Nuremberg trial model, that the victims know that there can be a way of the world preventing further horror like they experienced. One of the other things is the sense that nobody can escape if they have been torturers and abusers, that nobody can just set up their life and take another identity and feel that what they did so many years ago will be forgotten. That's why I think the experience of, of the Bengali people need to be brought forth. It is never, ever too late to bring forth the stories of what happened to those men, those women, those children back in 1971. That world opinion, that the courts, that the next generations, not only of Bengalis, but of others who are outraged, can be translated into action so that people now, at this time of life, don't have to experience what the Bengalis did in 1971 and on.